Now, for the third video of how to read schematic diagrams, we're going to focus on the capacitor. So, not uh, terribly complex, but there's some things to be aware of. So, we're going to cover them in uh, detail. First off, usually you'll get the value to use. You don't have to use the exact value. Plus, these are not precise components. Usually, they're off uh, quite a bit. So, in any case, unless you need a specific timing or something, just grab the closest value that you got. So 1000 microfarad is large for a regular capacitor. It is a 0.001 farad, the same as one millifarad, but for some reason they don't give capacitance in millifarads very often, just thousands of microfarads. So in any case, if you have one that large, it's going to be uh, polarized, most certainly. So large value non-polarized capacitors are very large and very expensive so probably won't see them they have the uh, lower values so we can already see the plus to a polarized is that you need higher values but you can only charge them one way that side has to be more positive that side more negative the more negative side usually has a gray bar right there with uh, dashes to indicate that's the negative side and the lead is usually shorter right there on the schematic it's a curve there on a schematic, the plus is not always included, but uh, a number of times you'll see the plus right there. So you get the higher values. With that though, you have certain chemistry to help you accomplish that. It ages, it dries out or whatnot over time. It wears out, and if you put it in backwards, it may vent gas. It might even vent gas forward, but uh, I don't think that's very common. I think it's usually when it's backwards, and if it's backwards and the voltage was high enough, it might even explode. So that's never happened to me. I have put them in backwards. I think I damaged the insulative material in the middle, so it didn't work near as good. But I never had one explode, but it does happen. So the non-polarized is basically just metal separated by an insulator, and uh, just a general insulator, and it's covered in plastic. So they don't usually degrade, even as you use them a lot. And then uh, you can charge it in either direction. Probably most of the time, in a circuit, a capacitor is storing charge from the power supply. So if you connect it directly to a voltage source, like you see here, then current's gonna flow a high amount of current, and it's gonna basically charge instantly. It's not perfectly instantly, but uh, pretty close. And uh, so they used to think that current was a positive fluid moving from the positive side of a circuit towards the negative. Now we know it's actually electrons moving from negative to a positive. But, uh, we still talk about conventional current because that's how analysis has evolved. But in any case, that side gets more positive, that side more negative as current flows. That's because there's a charge imbalance. And there's a direct relationship to how much charge there is. If you have twice the charge imbalance, you'll have twice the voltage. But uh, larger value capacitors take more charge to get that voltage, whereas smaller value capacitors take less charge uh, imbalance to get a certain voltage. And then uh, you can remove the power supply and it will still have that charge built up. And uh, so, usually, there's uh, some point where the capacitor uh, discharges. So, you probably won't connect it directly to ground on both sides. That will discharge it instantly. Usually, there's a load that it goes through and the load will limit current. And so, it will take time for it to discharge. As its voltage goes down, because it has less charge and balance, it's probably going to push less current through the load, unless the load set a current somehow. While studying electronics, you're gonna hear uh, quite a bit that capacitors pass alternating current and block direct current. As you can see here, we can charge and discharge the capacitor. You can really do that all you want, and you got no problems. So it's alternating. When it's charging, current's going one way. When it's discharging, current's going the other way. When you are charging it, there's a point where the capacitor gets to the same voltage as the voltage you're applying to it. No more current can flow. So that's it. That's why it blocks direct current. There's a point where current just stops and then you have to wait for it to go the other way. You have to wait for it to alternate. And so now we'll come to our demonstration circuit. First off though, this is a 0.47 microfarad capacitor right there. So they're around that size when they are less than a microfarad, just barely big enough for you to uh, grip them. Here is a 1000 microfarad capacitor. The value is on the other side plus the uh, maximum voltage. So I'll try to remember to show that. In any case, this is a pretty large value capacitor, probably the largest value you use in uh, basic electronics. It can power the LED for a brief period of time though on its own. So 
not very long at all, but it can. We are going to zoom back, and you can see here that I got the uh, power supply set to 5 volts. I'm going to take the jumper, my uh, makeshift switch, and connect it to the power supply. Watch the current here. Usually I limit current to uh, 20 milliamps, but uh, we're going to need more than that briefly while the capacitor charges. So the capacitor would take time. I'm going to make sure that the uh, capacitor is discharged by uh, connecting that to the negative rail because the LED does prevent a little bit of voltage from flowing. Now I'm going to touch the power supply and uh, there you can see we got uh, almost 30 milliamps of current briefly. Now it's just the current going through the LED. You'll see the current uh, stops when I remove the power supply and uh, the LED dims. So let me uh, lower the light again. I'm going to make sure the capacitor is discharged, connect to the negative supply and then uh, right there. So we did get 30 milliamps on the display. It's probably a bit higher than that, but this takes a little time to uh, show up. So we can't limit current uh, to 20 milliamps. It'll take longer. It won't hurt anything, but uh, the, it just won't light the LED instantly. And there you can see the glow fade down as the capacitor goes through its energy. So it doesn't store much energy. Usually you use it for timing. You have something looking at its voltage as it charges and discharges. You don't usually power stuff directly with it. There are super capacitors that you can, but uh, those are dangerous to use. You really got to know what you're using. So in any case, that's about it. We have positive side of the capacitor, the resistor, and then the resistor to long lead the anode of the LED, short lead the cathode to ground. It comes back to the capacitor there on the power rail. And then our makeshift switch, the uh, capacitor. As I said before, these uh, cans here probably have the value, 1,000 microfarad, and you can only charge it to 35 volts in that uh, direction right there. And this one, it may only be uh, 50 volts, I think, uh, but some capacitors you can charge to 100 volts. These are non-polarized, so that's something you got to look up. Uh, always uh, verify that. But in any case, that's really it for uh, capacitors and uh, schematics. There's a few other ways to use them. But uh, you'll learn about them when you learn about those circuits. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate Patreon if you can. That helps out the most. But just watching videos helps out a ton. Thanks to everybody that does that. I'll see you in the next video.